The British government give the alt-right the ban hammer. This and more in today's Soapbox. When the time comes, they'll be in the chambers. Yeah. 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 We'll give them a nice trial. They'll be found guilty, and we'll execute them. Yeah. Yeah. I am a national socialist. I'm not scared of that label. You can call me Nazi, you can call me fascist. That is what I am. Neo-Nazi group National Action facing UK ban as Home Secretary lashes out. Yes, indeed. So, um, National Action, they're getting prescribed this week, i.e. they're being declared a terrorist organisation. So, the the reasoning behind this, a neo-Nazi group set to be banned in the UK has been described by the Home Secretary as racist, anti-Semitic and homophobic. Good grief, they could almost be Islamic with that uh, um, stance. Okay, uh, let's see what that means. It means anyone who is a member or seeks support for the group faces arrest. I'm saying this is a problem for the alt-right in this country. A neo-Nazi group, and you go, well, that's not outright, is it? The problem is, when you've got Richard Spencer standing up at the NPI conference and saying that you do not disavow people on the same side as you, he's letting how the left act to dictate how he is advocating the right should act. And the problem you've got is when you've got extremists like this, idiots like this, these are the people that will dictate the understanding the public have of what the alt-right actually is. Small in number but noisy and self-publicising, these national action rallies will be illegal once the ban comes into force later this week. Belonging to a prescribed organisation, arranging a meeting in support of them, and wearing clothing or carrying articles in public which link to the group are offences under the Terrorism Act. This will give the police and the courts extra powers to go after people who are those members. National Action is a vile group. They promote homophobia, they promote violence and terrorism, and they have no place in this country. That's why I'm taking this action today. It also seems to be a response to the murder of Labour MP Joe Cox by a far-right extremist. The Home Office delayed the announcement of a ban until after the trial of her killer in case it prejudiced proceedings. There's no evidence Thomas Mayer had direct links to national action, but he was radicalised by the neo-Nazi literature he had at home as well as what he found online. However, the group has been linked to others convicted of racist attacks. This literature was found in the home of Zach Davis, who was jailed last year for trying to kill a Sikh dentist with a machete. And last week, Joshua Bonehill Payne, another man with links to the group, was found guilty of racially aggravated harassment of the Labour MP, Luciana Berger. Well, there's a very clear line in this country about where free speech crosses that line into hate speech. And we have a responsibility to ensure that people live free from fear of attack, be that online or offline, they should be dealt with in exactly the same way. And unfortunately, we know that there are, there are cases where what happens online trickles over into what happens in real life in terms of physical attacks. Yes, I am a national socialist. I'm not scared of that label. You can call me Nazi, you can call me fascist. That is what I am. This man, Jack Renshaw, was investigated for comments at an NA rally earlier in the year, and although a file was sent to the Crown Prosecution Service, he wasn't charged. The group is, is much more active, uh, arguably much more dedicated than other groups on the extreme right, and that makes them arguably a bit of low-hanging fruit for the government looking to prescribe certain, uh, in this case, overtly neo-Nazi groups. It puts national action on a par with Islamic State and Al-Qaeda and means any members prosecuted would be treated as terrorists, though in theory, the group could simply change its name to resume its activities. Ian Woods, Sky News. This is National Action's website. And as you can see, the Fash are back on the march and you've got this with his Fash hairdo. He'd be able to slip right into an NPI conference without anyone blinking an eye 
And that is why I'm saying this is a problem. You've got the SS bolts, uh, Tottenkopf uh, head, unashamedly Nazi. Like I say, unashamedly Nazi. So you can have all the peppy memes you like, but it's just for the kicks, just for the laughs. Just like the Roman salutes at the NPI conference. That's just people letting off steam. They're just being ironic. It's just, you know, they're just having a laugh, letting off steam. You know, sticking a finger up to society. That may be true. It may be true. But there will be a percentage of these people that are not joking. And if you're going to continue to actually be all-inclusive, including people who are serious about their neo-Nazi philosophy, then you're either supporting that yourself, or you've got your head in the sand that you're going to somehow be able to gain in more influence while ignoring them. The way I see it, there are three potential avenues as a way forward for the alt-right. Number one, you do nothing, you stay as you are, you keep having a laugh with your memes, yeah, you be your own little club, Limit, limited influence. Option two, you step into the arena and become serious contenders as a political movement. In order to do that, you're going to have to purge the serious Nazis out of the movement. Option three, you come out seriously in support of these neo-Nazis that are actually part of the alt-right. Whether, whether you want them or not, they are there. So if you're actually going to support them, then you're effectively agreeing with them. And if you're agreeing with them, expect to be prescribed just like national action have been this week. So the alt-right, yes, you are self-contained and you've had to be that way. The safest thing to do is to just not change. But that's also, the, the path of least resistance is also the one that will give you the least amount of influence. So if you're actually wanting to influence people, you're going to have to make a break from the tradition of being all-encompassing and never criticising anyone who's on the same quote-unquote side as you. Here, this brings me on to an event that happened earlier, well, it's, it's actually yesterday now, uh, at the time I'm recording this. Um, so, a man, Forest Hill Station in London, um, he, he starts wielding a knife and shouting how he wants to kill me a Muslim. As it turns out, the, from based on the description that a witness has given, she described the attacker as a black man with short hair, who she thought appeared to be in his late thirties or early forties. The police confirmed that they're holding a man who's aged thirty-eight. So let's let's assume that description is correct. Now, simply the fact that he's a black man, uh, I must admit that that reduces the odds somewhat, shall we say, to him being associated with the alt-right. However, this can be used by the, by the media in general to call out the rhetoric of the alt-right, especially if you're seen as a place that harbours neo-Nazis and the like. Uh, like I say, uh, I, it's almost a certainty this guy has nothing to do with it outright, but any event like this, they'll be using it to, to blame the rhetoric of the right. And this brings me on to anti-Semitism. So this is the last part we'll be dealing with today. And so the UK adopts anti-Semitism definition to combat hate crime against Jews. Now this is a definition that was worked out by the 
IHRA, which is the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, which is the British chapter, I believe, is chaired by MP Eric Pickles. Antisemitism, like any other hatred, is quite rightly considered to be abhorrent. Let's see, according to excerpts of the speech, it's unacceptable that there's anti-Semitism in this country, yes. Uh, it's even worse with incidents of reportal in the rise. Uh, as a government, we are making a real difference, yeah, 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 whatever. It means there will be one definition of anti-Semitism. In essence, language or behaviour that displays hatred towards Jews because they are Jews, and anyone guilty of that will be called out on it. Now, to use the phrase, will be called out on it, that's not the same as saying they will be prosecuted. So I'm still uh, somewhat confused as to if this is a legal definition or just a generic guideline for departments to use. Because, because as we're seeing, the police were already using a version of, of, the, of the, the, the definition for op- officers trying to determine if anti-Semitism had occurred or not. Now, if we move, go on to the actual... This is the wording that we have actually got for it. Because here, although this is saying uh, the following non-legally binding working definition, that's the statement as put forward in May 2016. That's non-legally binding. There still needs to be clarification as to what the deal is with British law if they are saying they are adopting this. So, let's just park that to one side because there's, if we, we will not know right this very second until there's further clarification from the government or the police or, or, or for that matter, it might even be when, when, when somebody gets dragged in front of the courts or something. Okay, now this is the official statement that is being adopted. Anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed toward Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and slash or their property, toward Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. And that sounds... You know, it sounds okay. So, what they've done though is they've managed to conflate a, a couple of things. So you've got the Jews as a race, You've got Judaism, the Jewish religion, and you have Israel, so that criticizing Israel is anti-Semitic. Now, what they're saying is that, you know, there is a, they, they, they have given themselves a caveat. Okay, manifestations might include the targeting of the state of Israel, conce- conceived as a Jewish collectivity. However, criticism of Israel similar to that levelled against any other country cannot be regarded as as anti-Semitic. So, if I'm saying, hey, I think they've got a crap financial policy, then that's not not anti-Semitic because I would be able to say something like that about any other country. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these, but there are a couple of points. Okay, now there's a point here about the Holocaust that I'm slightly uncomfortable about. Now it's not that, I I just want to clarify, I'm not denying the Holocaust. What I'm talking about here is if if this gets adopted as legal, then this would open the door to banning the discussion and debate of the Holocaust in United Kingdom and I think that would be a very very regressive step because I I want to be able to explore investigate debate discuss the Holocaust I I don't want it to be where just simply 
because someone is saying, you know, it's like here, it's, um, they're saying it's anti-Semitic. If you accuse the Jews as a people or Israel as a state of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust. Now, how do how do we how do we define exaggerating the Holocaust? Because I, you know how it's like I'm I'm saying here. Well, I'm I'm not denying that the Holocaust happened, but. Does that mean you're not allowed to question the, the, the six million figure? Is, is that the point they're getting at? And so, what is the Holocaust? Is it only what was done by the Nazis? Or was it everything that was done in that World War II period? You know, you, you, you know there's, there's things here that um, in themselves need, need, need a further definition. Rather than going, well, everyone knows what the Holocaust was. Well, not really, you know, because um, if we use that six million figure, for instance, like I'm saying, I'm not denying in any way that the Holocaust took place. It definitely did. I'm not 100% convinced that the Nazis killed six million Jews. No, let's just say that six million Jews were actually killed in the wartime period. What I think could be possible is that if you add up those killed by the Nazis and those killed by the Stalinist communists, then that may add up to the six million. Now, at the end of the war, I've, what could have happened is the victors then go, well, all these Jews that were killed, we'll just bundle them all up and we'll say, and we'll say that the Germans did it. You know, it's, 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 it's still six million that have been killed in the Holocaust. It depends on what you mean by the Holocaust. Or have you got to say it was all six million killed by the Nazis and anything other than that is anti-Semitic? Because all you're doing there is you're, you're, you're just simply giving the Germans a kicking rather, ra you know, you're rather than simply the fact you're recognising that... Um, a tragedy took place. You know, so so it's things like that. Are we allowed to debate these things? You know, or is debating them alone anti-Semitic? You you know, you're only going to be okay if you come out with the right answer. What if the evidence points elsewhere? The final two points I'll look at just now uh, relate to the state of Israel. Okay, let's see. Accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or to the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nations. <sighs> see, here's the thing. I understand there's lots of conspiracy theories and that sort of thing, and I understand that there would, you know, like that there would be a desire to actually circumvent these but what if the facts actually back up what you're saying even if you're you know so if you're telling the truth it's still anti-semitic anti just because it's inconvenient now don't get me wrong I'm not sitting here with any proof but it's just the way it's phrased it's like well <laughs> I understand if it's if it's like a false accusation of such but if but if it's but if it's a factually correct accusation, then surely that's no longer being anti-Semitic. You know, it's, it's you know, you know this is this is making a, a presumption of innocence. Um, no, denying the Jewish people their right to self-determination, e.g., by claiming that the existence of a state of Israel is a racist endeavor. Okay. You know, here... Right, the Jewish people, the right to self-determination. Now, this is... A, this kind of crosses the line once again, because the Jewish people are... were not... or, or, or should I say, are not. Uh, see, because the Jewish people, are we talking about people who are Jews? Or are we talking about people who are ethnically Jews? as in that make up a nation of people. 
It's not the same thing. But are they talking about citizens of the state of Israel? Or are they talking about people who are who uh, practice Judaism? That's the problem with saying the Jewish people. It is very ambiguous. I have no problem whatsoever <laughs> with um, the, the rights for the state of Israel to exist and to uh, and to govern itself. Now here, um, by claiming that the existence of a state of Israel is a racist endeavor. Well, what I would say is the state of Israel is a racial endeavor as opposed to racist endeavor. Because there's no doubt about it, if you look at the state of Israel's immigration policy and practices, that it is 100% racial. Now, as far as racist, that is more of how you interpret how they then treat other people, non-Jews. So, let's see. Let's see, now that, that this kind of brings me on to the final bullet point I want to look at. Drawing comparisons of contemporary Israeli policy to that of the Nazis. So even if there is a, a direct correlation, a comparison that can be made, what they're saying here is right or wrong, it's anti-Semitic. Now if you're falsely making a comparison, I can understand that being anti-Semitic, no problem at all. But if it's correct, then why would that? Why should that be anti-Semitic if you're actually pointing something out? For instance, the Israelis' policy against the Palestinians. If you compare them to like Pol Pot or Chairman Mao or Stalin, does that mean that that's fine? That gets a free pass. They're okay with that. That's not anti-Semitic. It's only if you compare them to the Nazis. Is that? It's. <laughs> You know, because that's, that, that would be ridiculous if that is the case. And like I say, I'm not talking about inappropriate comparisons. I'm talking about if the facts match, then surely it's not anti-Semitic to compare them to whoever it is appropriate to compare them to. However, like I say, um, most of this is certainly, you know, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. What I do find interesting uh, in the first place is why anti-Semitism has its own special category in the first place. And it's all because of the Holocaust. And let's not forget the Holocaust. And so it's a bit like this IHRA uh, are it's a bit like imagine that you're a self-harmer and you keep opening up a wound and so what the IHRA are doing is they're, they're the razor blade to your arm to, so that you never forget never forget the holocaust and so that's why there's the special category called anti-semitism and then of course uh, the Muslim Brotherhood invented the word Islamophobia as the Muslim equivalent of anti-Semitism. And that is why th those two special categories are actually in our language. Everywhere else it's just hate speech and racism. But these two groups get their own special category. So what can I say in conclusion? As far as the alt-right are concerned, there's an expression that we used in Scotland. If you flee with the crows, you get shot with them. So, if you fly with the crows, you get shot with them. In other words, if the farmer's going out shooting crows and he sees something flying with the crows, that's going to get shot down too. So, if you fly with the neo-Nazis, you'll get taken down with the neo-Nazis. If you are a neo-Nazi, then it's quite right that you're taken down. If you're not a neo-Nazi and you're thinking it's cool to hang out with the, those neo-Nazis, then expect the pain. 
Alternatively, you can stand out if you're not a neo-Nazi and actually clarify what you actually are. At the end of the day, the alt-right is going to be what the majority decides you are. You can say what you are all you like. The influence you have is going to be determined by what other people believe you to be. Every chance the mainstream media gets, they are going to be throwing examples like the guy who's saying, I want to kill me a Muslim. Nothing to do with alt-right. But they'll use any incident like that they can to demonise you. And if you're happy to sit there and go, well, we're the demons, so demonise us all you want, we're the demons, then it's just going to be more of the same. You're just going to be whiny little bitches sitting in the corner. I'm Jabba, this has been my soapbox, and I'll catch you next time. (laughs) 